it's Laura, and welcome back to our video series. Today's topic is one that I'm very excited about, which is equipment games. My hope is that our training plans are forever in our favor. A friendly reminder that if the animal in your life is showing a sudden onset of uh, medical or behavior concerns, that you do consult your veterinary professional to rule out any medical concern right from the get-go. Now it's pretty common that dog owners come to me for help, specifically because they're noticing that their dog seems nervous about the human's body language, movements towards them, or the presence of their equipment, whether it be a collar, it be a harness, it be the presence of the leash, or for some dogs just wearing a rain jacket or a winter jacket. But as we break down the steps, there's an important launching point that we need to consider is that our hands mean good things and that we're teaching our animals, no matter the species, that the very subtlety of our body movement towards them, hands moving towards them, should have positive outcomes. But typically what happens is we will show the dog their equipment or the horse or the cat and the animal backs away, that's important information right there because them backing away is part of their dialogue that's demonstrating that there's a potential aversive association or punishing association. And so acquiring some baseline video to see how your animal responds with just the presence of your hands moving forward or the presence of the equipment could be a tell of some new fun training games that you can practice at home. What I'm hoping in today's time together is to give some initial tips to help you think a bit more about how your body language, the movement towards your animal, and the presence of their equipment can have positive outcomes. It's also valuable for us to always assess from the beginning the baseline of what we're observing that we're concerned about and then take a moment to create a plan for how we can help create positive associations with the animals in our life. We also want to be careful that we're not accidentally using their equipment as a steering wheel by grabbing their collar to make them come closer, whether it's on a walk or it's during a veterinary visit. There's a lot of different contexts where animals are learning from the environment around them all the time. So an important consideration that we should keep in mind when it comes to equipment games is what's behind the presence of the equipment, which is us, which is our body language, meaning the way that we move towards the animal or hopefully inviting the animal to move towards us to put their own clothes on, so to speak. So my sweet boy Santino's back out to help with today's video. And a good starting point to consider is that the presence of the hands mean positive outcomes. Yeah. And this is tactile games. So there I looked in her left ear, and notice I'm not in there digging around. You know, I'm not, hi, you. Oh, you're so smart, you're six months old. Okay. She likes to give the paw, so I'm gonna work with that. And then we're gonna work on a tactile game around her neck. So this is gonna be part of the game of touching her collar means good things. So with Santino, it's taking each step down to small approximations. <gasps> yes, that hands have good outcomes so that he's bringing his body into the presence of the hands is our first step. Yeah, good job. Then, I'm gonna slowly move towards him coming into position on his own so that as I reach for his collar, that there are positive outcomes. And this is a great opportunity to do a little bit of training every day, a minute here or a minute there, while you're weaving in 
their meal time and just make sure that you're feeling the animal lean into what the equipment game looks like. Now you're naked. Now you don't have any clothes on. Then I'm gonna to toss the next treat out to reset. And then when he comes back, he sees his clothes and we put our clothes on. Great job, sweetheart. You're doing so good. Good job. Remember this? What do we do with this? What do you do with it? Good. What is that? So I hope that these were some helpful initial tips to get you thinking about the equipment game from a fresh perspective. And I look forward to hearing how you apply what you observe today to whatever species at home um, or at work that you enjoy having this collaboration with. So thank you for joining us again today. Please feel free to visit explorethejoyoflearningtogether.com to learn more from our other videos. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Thank you to my boy Santino for his help and have fun with your goals. Mm -hmm.